Chris, congratulations. You just announced the mapping and sampling program at your, your silver project, basically, in Mexico. Yes? Yes. Thank you, Tracy. And of course, uh, I read the news release, well written as usual. You explain, how about you explain to our audience why you have selected this process? Okay, well, first of all, the company is set up with cash flow, which is our model, uh, because we have to control the issuance of shares. So at this point, we have 160 million shares outstanding, but the target that we have, the geological target is an IOCG in a mining camp, surrounded by uh, on the one on the one side of us, Cisco Development, Barksdale Resources on the other side, 28 claims in the middle of, a, of an established mining camp. But our target there, geologically, is a silver IOCG. IOCG, if you're, it, it, iron oxide, copper, gold, um, deposits, some of the biggest deposits in nature. And, and they get names. They're big enough that they get names. Ernest Henry in Australia, um, uh, Sosigo, Brazil, uh, Candelaria, Chile, uh, Olympic Dam, probably the biggest of them all. So... If it's this deposit type, and we have a, uh, a significant accumulation of evidence suggests that, um, then it's going to be a very meaningful, uh, uh, substantial discovery. Silver, in this case, because really these deposits, they come from, from, from the mantle. They, um, iron is, a, is, a, is, a, is one element that they, have, they share in common, and <clears throat> they come from deep uh, in the mantle. And in the instance of Mexico, there's... Uh, a ton of silver in the in the mantle, which is why it's manifest through deposits north to south throughout Mexico. Uh, in 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 Australia, you have copper, gold, and uranium. With more uranium, and in Chile, you have copper, gold, and more copper. Uh, so so Candelaria has uh, has more copper. In this instance, because it's Mexico, uh, we see a, a a real abundance of silver, and we see the key indicators that suggest to us that it's IOCG geology. Okay, and and I read in your news release that you've got twenty eight contiguous claims in this mining camp. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. In, in the middle and throughout the, 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 uh, the camp, yes. So Chris, um, when I was reading the news release, if I understand this correctly, uh, you selected this area due to the magnetic survey you did in 2021. Can you talk to us a little bit more about this, please? Yes, okay, so the, one, of the, one of the characteristics for IOCG deposits is magnetite, iron. And, um, uh, we so we, we we and we found massive magnetite on surface veins with silver, high grades of silver, high to bonanza grades of silver in veins that had been you know our first indication was artisanal mining um, that had occurred there. So we conducted a magnetic survey and found um, three very distinctive magnetic anomalies. The biggest of which uh, is the one that we're targeting now, um, and it has uh, it's about. It's almost a kilometer long, 500 meters wide, and it's about it it it's about 400 meters, 300 meters to the west of where these veins daylight on surface that carry silver. We also um, we also did a, a soil survey above this magnetic anomaly and had uh, highly anomalous silver in soils. So there's a lot of indications that this uh, this magnetic uh, plug effectively uh, could be carrying silver, and it's the dimensions are large, IOCG type large. So you know, I mean, I, I can go through how you could get to several hundred millions of tons pretty quickly on something of this size. I, well, I, I think what you're also suggesting based on what I read is your location is fantastic. And so there's a lot of promise here. Can you tell us what the timeline is for the sampling and mapping and what will happen next? Yeah, the location is in the middle of a mining camp. 10 kilometer trend of copper gold with uh, a Cisco development on the on the eastern side of this and Barksdale resources on the western side. We're offset. We're through it and offset. Um, this major anomaly is in about the middle of it, offset from by about a kilometer, kilometer and a half. And um, um, the preponderance of metal that we're finding is silver. There's lots of copper and gold, but but we also have very strong numbers for silver, which is perhaps a different zonation than the copper and gold part of the system. Um, the, the, the timeline is uh, we need to we need to vector in on, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, for our next drilling campaign. We have effectively the anomaly that, that is most suggestive of IOCG potential. So what we're doing now is further sampling of all the veins that manifest themselves to the east of this anomaly, uh, mapping of the structures that are around above and, and through the the, uh, the structure, and then um, 
and then drilling. Uh, so I we anticipate drilling in four to six month time frame, and our objective is significant discovery. IOCG is the target here. Um, the metal inventories for these are are are, are massive and and high grade and valuable. Uh, Wikipedia has a great definition for this deposit type. As I mentioned earlier, they get names. Uh, and they build, you know, mines, substantial mines. So there's a tremendous amount of value. We're looking for a silver endowment in particular. There's tons of evidence of copper and gold. There's lots of copper and gold here. Um, and that's consistent with the model. But our, our particular, uh, in this particular part of it, we're looking at the silver zonation. And silver silver is what we find in the magnetite. Um, magnetite is what's providing the magnetic response. And the magnetic response is very large, a kilometer long, 500 meters wide. Okay. And for those that, may not want to go over to Wikipedia, can you please tell them what an IOCG deposit is? Because, you know, clearly this is something that an experienced individual in this industry would get excited about. You know, the classification started, I guess, late 80s, early 90s. Dr. Murray Hitzman was was one of the key uh, who called this project 2006, uh, visited at, at that time. He was head of the uh, uh, of the School of Economic Geology, the Colorado School of Mines. But basically, they started classifying these deposits, IOCG, uh, in, in, in the early 90s, late 80s. Um, and um, in this area, Mike Tedeschi did his PhD on this particular one. And, and um, the, the, they have iron. They, have, uh, they come from the mantle. So they come from lower. And they usually are where there's major crustal faults because you get, uh, you know, you get material from the mantle breaking to surface. They bring high concentrations of metal with iron uh, and usually very high grades and substantial substantial size. So those are the, the, the characteristics. They're all a little bit different. In this instance, one of the biggest indicators that we have is that the silver type that we see is silver halides. We're getting 75% of the silver that we see here that comes with the magnetite is silver halides, which is quite uncommon. There are silver deposits north to south throughout Mexico, all up in the west in the um, uh, Western U.S. and and but principally in Mexico, it's a fantastic jurisdiction for silver. But that silver is 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 principally in the form of of acatites and in silver sulfides. This is silver halides. Why? Because it's different. So silver halides are are those that come with halite metals like uh, of silver chlorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine, and and in normal circumstances you might get 10 10 percent would be silver silver halides. In this instance, it's 75, 80%, quite unique. And a key indicator that, that this is a different sourcing of, of uh, mineralogy. Uh, so that, as well as the massive magnetite and now the very large uh, magnetic anomaly, these are all corroborative pieces of uh, evidence that support the potential, uh, as well as really, you know, some of the world's leading experts in this having already called this in this area. Uh, so it's a matter of really for us, we believe of finding, finding, locating, the source of the fantastic mineral endowment that's already evidence at, at San Javier. Lots of copper and gold. And as I mentioned in our, in our, in our case, we're looking at, um, uh, at silver coming with magnetite, which, um, which has all the hallmarks of an IOCG deposit type. So that's what's making us quite excited for our further work here. Well, of course, further to that excitement, you're gonna know pretty much many of the, the answers to these questions by the end of the year. Would that be correct based on the timeline you were suggesting to me? Absolutely, Tracy. We'll be, uh, you know, we're systematically going to carry on the further work that we need to do now, mapping and sampling around these structures, uh, and then we'll be drilling them. And, um, and our aspiration there is to, is to, is to confirm this deposit type uh, with a silver endowment, which would be very substantial. So um, um, that's our aspiration. And there's a, there's a lot of evidence, a lot of work goes into it. We have important claims in the middle of a mining camp. Um, and, and, um, and, and we believe also very important geology that, uh, that these, uh, that the, um, the, the, uh, the central features of the entire mineralizing event for this 10 kilometer trend may be, uh, may be located on the Canuck ground. Yeah. Well, further to that, if I can just get you to step aside for a second as well, because those of you now who are going, okay, Canuck Resources, let's go to their website and find out more. Um, I thought it was interesting. I think I read the number 2.6 million you brought in over the last many years from eight producing natural gas wells in Texas uh, to, cal to help subsidize your, your initiatives here. Is that conclusion correct, or can you correct me and please provide an update for our audience? Yes, the, we uh, so we have we had a 
we were involved in a gas play in Texas. In in uh, we started there, I guess, as early as 2009, 2011. We we had uh, started into the company. We there's oil and gas. We had a, a a very successful well into a gas field and very low decline rate. So it's provi providing cash for the company. Basically, all of these companies, dilution is an issue. It costs you a quarter million bucks a year to run a public company. So that fits our model of trying to pay for our corporate costs without selling shares and diluting the company unnecessarily. Um, we have, uh, it's been very long life. There's oil zones behind pipe and further gas zones behind pipe and further potential to drill gas wells within the field that we're in. So we'll be doing this for a long time. Provides a nice cash flow for us to, um, to um, you know, avoid unnecessary dilution of our shares. That's number one. And number two, we seek these types of projects to do exactly that because, uh, so we, we, you know, we advance and we look for other opportunities to enhance our cash flow to restrict our share issuance. And the other part of the model is major discovery potential with our with the geology that we're after. And IOCG, a silver heavy IOCG, would would fit that bill. If we're successful in that undertaking, we could achieve major revaluation. It's our aspiration and our um, supposition for for the value of our shares as we get recognition for that prospect. In and um, so so that's how it fits the model, Tracy. We have cash flow to to minimize unnecessary dilution so that we can create value on a per share basis with discovery. Well, I personally enjoyed your uh, website. And for those of you interested in finding out more about Canuck Resources, please go to the following website. And thank you so much for the update, Chris. I hope you'll keep us update, updated through 2024 as it sounds like there's some very exciting uh, updates to occur. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Happy New Year.